Hello and welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor where we are continuing to deal with mesh currents uh, and solving mesh current problems that have dependent sources. So here we have on the board a more complicated problem where we actually have not one but two dependent sources and not only that one of these sources is a dependent current source and one of them is a dependent voltage source. So notice what we have here is uh, we have a constant current source of 19 amps here we have a 240 volt source oriented kind of backwards where the positive side's down. We have the resistors and then we have these uh, dependent sources. So the value of this current, for instance, is two times whatever the value of this current happens to be through the 5 ohm resistor. And the value of this voltage source is going to end up being um, uh, four times the value of I sub 4, which is running through this source over on the end. So this problem is interesting for a couple of reasons. One, it's because it's got not one but two sources, uh, dependent sources, and number two, it's interesting because there are different types of dependent current sources. One is a dependent voltage source, one is a dependent current source. But, as we've said more than once up to now, just start tackling your problems in the same way. If you don't know how to do it, if it looks more complicated, just roll up your sleeves and go back to what you know. Everything I'm teaching you is fundamental skills. So just go back to your fundamental skills and see where it takes you. And if you have to make little detours along the way, then great, but, but don't throw your hands up. So here we have one, two, three, four meshes. So one more mesh than we're typically used to dealing with. So let's go in and, and label them. This one we're going to call I sub A. Um, this one up here we'll call it I sub B. This one down here. Uh, we're going to call it I sub C, and this one over here we'll call I sub D. And what we're trying to f actually calculate in the circuit, circuit, we want to find the values of all of these currents that we have labeled. Notice that we have this guy, I1, I2, I3, I4, I5. Some of these currents are actually used in the, uh, in the dependent sources to get their values. But what we're trying to find is calculate these, these currents, right? One, two, three, four, and five. And also, when you are asked to calculate the value of some current that's labeled in your drawing, then you need to calculate the value of that current from the, that point of view, from the point of view of that current. So in other words, this is I sub one, it's going down. So I need to calculate it as if it were going down. If it happens to turn out to be a negative value, then it just means that it's negative, you know, uh, opposite the direction that, that was actually drawn here. But that's nothing wrong with that. It just means we're assuming it's going down. If we get a positive value for I1, then that's the actual direction I1 is going. If we end up calculating a negative value for I1, it just means that the actual current here is going up opposite to what we have actually labeled. So we're calculating these values based on their point of view. So let's go ahead and work on I sub A. Right? So let's look at mesh A. So we are going to sum uh, around through the source here and then through the 40 ohm resistor just like we've been typically doing. But we run into a roadblock right away because this is a current source. We do not know the value of the voltage. So we can't sum it up. But then we realize, look, this is a current source on the outside boundary of a mesh. So I sub A, which is circulating here, is going in the same direction as this 19 amp source. So I sub A is actually equal to 19 amps. So literally, you can write down for your first mesh current equation, I sub A is equal to 19. It's a fact. It's given to you in your drawing. It would be the equivalent of, of basically drawing all of your mesh currents